Happy Halloween, everyone. The patron pick just happened to occur right next to Halloween. And so for this video, they have chosen Haunter. Really? Okay, whatever. Now we have Haunter, and if you watched the Indigo League anime as a kid, you will remember the terrifying trio of episodes where Ash is outmatched by Sabrina, goes to the Tower of Terror, and returns with Haunter, who defeats Sabrina by making her laugh. On the competitive side, Haunter is of course completely outclassed by its evolution, Gengar. However, it has some pretty excellent stats in its own right. For example, its 115 base special attack is equal to that of Raikou, and is thus higher than a lot of top tier Pokemon such as Latias. But of course, there's more to competitive Pokemon than stats, otherwise known as the Rampardos Theorem. But Haunter hasn't lived entirely in Gengar's shadow. It's had its own storied competitive career. And so, we ask, how good was Haunter actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Haunter's immunity to rap gave it an important niche in RBYUU, making it an effective tool in playing around the antics of top tier Pokemon, Tentacruel and Dragonite, especially with its high special. It was slower and 3 hit KO'd by Tentacruel's Surf, but it also 3 hit KO'd it back with Thunderbolt or Psychic, meaning it could effectively dent Tentacruel, making it far easier to deal with. Plus, a 30% Psychic special drop meant Haunter would come out on top against Dragonite. It didn't threaten it as immediately, but it was also far less threatened in return being 4 hit KO'd by Blizzard and 5 hit KO'd by Thunderbolt, and it was faster, meaning it could dent Dragonite a few times, again with the threat of a Psychic Special Drop, before finishing it with Explosion. Speaking of Explosion, its huge base power made up for Haunter's low attack stat, seriously denting Hypno and completely destroying Kadabra. Haunter also had the coveted trait of being the tier's fastest sleep user, allowing its team to get out to an early advantage, especially with Explosion's ability to cripple Hypno looking to even up the score with its own sleep. With its combination of offensive and defensive utility, Haunter was a great Pokemon in Gen 1 UU. Haunter was excellent once again in GSC UU. Sure, it had its drawbacks, its special stat was split in two, and it received a meager special defense. Psychic special drop rate went from 33 to 10%, and it only dropped special defense. And finally, the prominence of Sleep Talk neutered the effectiveness of Hypnosis. However, it also received a sizable amount of buffs. Explosion had its power increased, allowing it to chunk just about everything for significant damage, which was especially useful first because of Haunter's high speed, and second against its own old foe Hypno, who was potentially KO'd with a little chip damage, such as that of Spikes. Speaking of Spikes, they made Haunter's attacks more difficult to switch around. Now wouldn't the ever-present leftover somewhat inhabit that though? Fear not, because Haunter came prepared by holding no item and using Thief, stealing the leftovers for itself. The offensive mayhem Haunter caused was greatly appreciated by teammates such as Electabuzz, as they would have an easier time busting through the opponent's crippled defenses. Now despite Haunter's low bulk, it had incredibly important defensive utility. It walled the absurdly dangerous Cursed Granbull, which mowed through much of the rest of the tier. If Granbull opted to run HP ground to hit Haunter, it would give up on Sleep Talk and thus remove much of what made it so threatening. This usually wasn't worth it, and thus Haunter was able to use Granbull as a point of entry throughout a match, repeatedly poking holes in the opponent's defenses. Haunter was able to check other threats nicely too, with its Gyarados and Kabutops nailing Thunderbolt, and its Victory Bell slamming Psychic. Its explosion was great to either break a hole in the opposing team's defensive core, or to weaken weaken the dangerous Needle Queen into KO range for a teammate, while also doing up to 99% to Scyther, potentially preventing a devastating Sword Stance Sweep or Baton Pass with any chip damage. Alternatively, it could use Destiny Bond for a similar purpose, which had to be timed even more precisely to work, but didn't wind up in a self-KO if used wrong, and guaranteed it took its target down. Overall, Haunter was a great Pokemon with a plethora of uses in GSC UU. Gen 3 Haunter is the subject of one of Pokemon's most interesting tiering anomalies. It wasn't allowed in UU, not because it was too good for the tier, but because of the NFE clause, which prohibited non-fully evolved Pokemon from being used in UU, with the exception of Scyther. The clause came into existence with the ideas that players wanted to play UU to get away from OU, and thus had the goal of preventing UU from being littered with the pre-evolutions of OU Pokemon, such as Marsh Tomp, Matang, Diglett, and of course, Haunter. Now, was this the most theoretically sound clause in existence? No, of course not. Those Pokemon were not going to be metagame shaping forces, and there was the whole Scyther exception deal. Luckily, Advanced UU wound up being one of the most excellent, diverse metagames in existence, helped out by the fact that players could use Scyther, and didn't have the option of recreating OU's dominant Spikes Gengar teams in UU. The player base agreed that it was overall a positive move. This NFE clause also applied to NU at first, but when the tier was beginning to get played more, the clause was removed, and it was agreed that the relatively unexplored meta 
deserved a fresh start. As a result, Enyu was where Haunter found its home. It was one of the best offensive Pokemon around. First, its base 95 speed was tied for the second fastest in the tier, with Plusso, Diglett, and Yanma, and was only outsped by Raticate. This, in conjunction with Haunter's immunities to fighting, normal, and ground, meant it got a lot of opportunities to hit the field and start causing havoc. It was particularly useful for pivoting into the tier's best Pokemon, Hitmonchan, blocking its fighting stab as well as rapid spin, and also completely stuffing Raticate's choice band normal stab. Once it hit the field, it was able to slam the opponent with the Psychic Thunderbolt combination behind the safety of a substitute. Speaking of how hard it hit the opponent, Haunter appreciated a lot about the third generation. In addition to the introduction of abilities giving it levitate and thus its ground immunity, it also loved the fact that EVs were no longer maxed out on everything, meaning it was able to hit Pokemon a lot harder. Alternatively, it could drop sub in order to cripple a wall by stealing its leftovers with Thief, GSC style, and could wear the opponent down with will o -Wisp or Toxic if it was aiming for Flareon. These were great against defensive staples like Chimeco, but sometimes Haunter's team would want to play a faster game, and that was just fine, because its explosion still dealt an absolute ton of damage to every non-resist, and as a bonus, no explosion resist wanted to eat will o -Wisp. Haunter could customize its moveset to its preference, including using Pattaya or Slackberry to increase its threat level, while bluffing Thief. It could either sweep on its own or break the game open for its offensive-minded teammates to do so, getting many opportunities to do so thanks to its amazing speed and auspicious typing and ability combination. All in all, Haunter was one of the absolute best Pokemon in Advanced NU. The fourth generation was exceedingly kind to Haunter. Thanks to the new physical special split, it was finally able to use its special attacking stab. It also loved the addition of Life Orb, which provided a significant, highly appreciated power boost to all its attacks. Now, it wouldn't be breaking into Yuyu since Miss Magius outclassed it, but it returned to absolutely destroy Enyu. Sure, Skunk Tank resisted Haunter's stabs and could trap it with Pursuit until it switched into and was blown away by a Life Orb boosted Hidden Power Ground, which also easily displayed of Magneton, who was the only Pokemon that could safely take the combination of Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb. Haunter threatened a huge portion of the tier. Defensive staples Slowking and Hypno ran in terror from its Shadow Ball, while many offensive threats like Metacham and Magmortar were outpaced and crushed as well. As always, Haunter's excellent typing gave it many opportunities for wreaking havoc by switching in easily against many common moves despite its non-existent bulk. Its normal immunity allowed it to blank choice ban Tauros as Double Edge and Hitmonchan and Sand Slash as Rapid Spin. Its fighting immunity let it come in against Hitmonchan's close combat and Metacham's high jump kick, and its ground immunity was also useful for a variety of earthquakes, from sand slashes to Tauroses. Some players resorted to max special defense Licky Licky or Cradilly to handle Haunter, but they were far from safe. Haunter absolutely ruined them with the taunt Will-O-Wisp combo, which also crippled Skunk Tank, Muck, Gastrodon, and Regi switch-ins, and let Haunter mess with Poliwrath, Bioplume, Golem, Rhydon, and Regirock one-on-one. -on -one. Haunter was even a solid focus sash lead, with with Taunt to the nice Stealth Rock and Destiny Bond to take an attacker down with it, and could even feasibly run Choice Scarf. Surprise KOing would be faster Pokemon like Charizard and Scarf Charizard, or using Trick to unleash its Scarf on bulky walls, crippling them. Haunter was so good that it usually didn't need to use Explosion in a game, or even fit it on its moveset. This was a testament to how nasty it was with its other moves, because Explosion was still quite useful whenever it was used, since it was now boosted by Life Orb, and ripped Licky Licky, Regis, Politoed, and Bulk skunk tank apart. So in conclusion, Haunter was again one of the best Pokemon in NU. Gen 5 nerfed Explosion, but it didn't stop Haunter. It was once again a terrific Pokemon in Enyu. However, before we get to that, we have to go over its performance in Aryu, which wasn't just a quote, technically it's viable, end quote, kind of deal. It was legitimate. It wasn't a good spin blocker because of its extreme frailty, meaning it dropped against both Kabutops' Aqua Jet and Cryogonal's Ice Beam. However, as an offensive threat, it was quite difficult to switch into. It threatened many common defensive staples like Rotomo, Quillfish, Golurk, Tangrowth, Slowking, Desperate and Yuxi, while not being switched into it by other bulky Pokemon like Alomomola and Dredagon. With HP Fire, it crushed would-be walls like Ferrocene and Escavalier as well. It wasn't just good against defensive Pokemon, it outsped many offensive Pokemon like Moltres and Lilligan, while switching into moves like Metacham's High Jump Kick, Banded Entei's Extreme Speed, and Banded Durant's and Scarf and Boar's Superpower. It certainly had its flaws, what with being a ghost type that couldn't really block Rapid Spin, and its immense frailty really stood out at times, especially against teams with Pursuit Spear 2, 
costume. However, Haunter was a genuinely good Pokemon and absolutely worth using in black and white RU tournaments. Now, given its flaws, Haunter wasn't used enough to be a true RU Pokemon and dropped to NU. There, it was thoroughly excellent. It molded through common defensive Pokemon. Golurk, Duocean, Mistravis, Tangela, and Garbodor all ran in fear, while staples in Lomomola, Mandibuzz, and Regirock couldn't switch in. As always, it wasn't just good against defensive Pokemon. It was able to check several key offensive threats. Its fighting immunity was crucial in thwarting close combats from the mighty choice band Sock, Scarf Primate, and Toxic Boost Zangoose, and its normal immunity was crucial for the latter's facade. Levitate was excellent in allowing it to switch in on Golurk's Earthquake, while allowing it to hover above the multiple layers of spikes littered around the field in most games. Plus, for the first time, Haunter wasn't just using its immunities. It actually managed to make use of a resist. With its normal and fighting immunities, as well as its grass resistance, Haunter would, in theory, be a great Sawsbuck check. However, as a result of its poor defense, it was two hit KO'd by a Life Orb Horn Leech, or one hit KO'd after a Swords Dance. That is until it slapped on a new Gen 5 addition, Eviolite, which turned it into a legitimate answer to both Sawsbuck and Superior. Alongside Will-O-Wisp, Eviolite also ensured it lived to tell the tale against Skunk Tank, or whatever the ghost's equivalent of living would be, while ruining bulky walls like Audino and Eviolite Piloswine, and finally allowing it to reliably spin block against War Turtle, ensuring that Stealth Rock would dig up into the opponent's Charizard. Overall, Haunter had a variable host of useful applications in both RU and NU, so Gen 5 was a really great one for it. The hat trick wasn't enough for Haunter, as it returned to Oraz for its fourth straight generation of solid NU performance. It enjoyed the addition of fairy types as they were simply another victim for its powerful sludge bomb. It could also make greater use of the sludge bomb poisons and will-o'-wisp burns it distributed, as well as potentially being paired with toxic spikes by using Hex as its ghost stab, which was brutally strong against status Pokemon. Of course, if it was all about power, Shadow Ball did just fine, as did the new alternative poison stab that didn't poison much but was slightly stronger sludge wave although sludge bombs high poison rate was generally preferred for crippling a would-be check in assault vest magmortar as always haunter shredded several of nu's top tier pokemon this time its most notable victims were the mighty zatu and mesperit as well as several other great pokemon like gorgeist xl abomasnow and clefairy they would run in fear and haunter would easily cripple its switch-ins once again skunk tank was ruined by will wisp and haunter could ensure its safety by running reflect type at absolute worst it would trade with skunk tank via destiny bond opening up a teammate like Mesprit. Most everything else struggled to switch in without being crippled in some way. The metagame's lower emphasis on attacks Haunter was immune to meant its defensive utility was significantly lower, meaning it had to play more aggressively to get its opportunities. However, it was so difficult to switch into that it was worth working for those opportunities, and it did still have the terrific trait of checking and spin blocking Hitmonchan, who was also as top tier as ever. Overall, Haunter was quite a good Pokemon in NU once again. Power Creep finally affected Haunter in Generation 7, knocking it down to PU. It was an effective offensive threat. It threatened out common defensive Pokemon in Jellicent, Clefairy, and Savali Fairy, while retaining effectiveness against Hitmonchan and being a prime Skunk Tank and Spiritomb lure. It was the usual for Haunter. The problem was that for the first time, it had serious competition. Oracorio G wasn't just nearly as fast. In fact, it had actual bulk and could make use of that bulk with Roost, making it a much better Pokemon throughout the course of a game. Unlike Haunter, it was able to reliably check top-tier offensive threats like Victory Bell and Girder, while still being able to dance around Hitmonchan, providing much greater utility for its team. Speaking of dancing, its dancer ability let it check even more Pokemon by turning it into an excellent counter to Quiver Dance Blossom. It didn't have to settle for luring Skunk Tank and Spiritomb either. It could blow them away with a boosted Hurricane turned Supersonic Strike. Oh yeah, holding a Z Crystal in addition to its decent bulk meant it wasn't completely destroyed by Knockoff, which was everywhere. Finally, with Calm Mind, it could actually threaten to sweep teams. Haunter's utility tended to pale in every aspect in comparison to Oracorio. Impressively, it managed to keep itself as a legitimate PU Pokemon. Its toolkit was of course rife of experimentation that could differentiate itself. It just got harder and harder to use such a frail Pokemon. However, its great speed, which incidentally got the jump on all Oracorio farms, high special attack, and excellent coverage in addition to a devil of support move pool, meant it could threaten quite a lot of teams if used well. One could do a lot worse than Haunter. And all things considered, it was pretty decent. Not bad considering it's not a fully evolved Pokemon, that it took seven generations to finally be considered less than solid or even great in a lower tier. 
Hold up, we're not done with Gen 7 yet. Because against all odds, Haunter has some limited VGC usage as well. While Evil Light Haunter certainly wasn't making the rounds, the sudden grounding of the previously levitating Gengar in Generation 7 gave Haunter an extremely tiny niche, one only exploited by longtime Australian player Tony Kapitni Nguyen. Tony debuted Haunter at the Brisbane Regional. I don't know about you guys, but there's nothing that would put more fear into my heart than seeing a freaking Haunter on the other team. I mean, what's it gonna do? Obviously, something would levitate. In Tony's case, he ran Haunter alongside his Garchomp for terrifying offensive pressure on the Tapus that would normally stop the Land Shark. His Haunter ran Protect, Taunt, Sludge Bomb, and Shadow Ball, along with Focus Sash, to ensure it could get as much done with its poor bulk as possible. Tony ended up winning the entire event in stunning fashion, making the threat of Haunter a very real one. What's more, Tony wasn't done with Haunter yet. He even took it to the Oceania International Championships alongside his trusted Garchomp. What's really notable though is that he ran a completely different Haunter set. Instead of Sash and Sludge Bomb, he pivoted to a Choice Scarf Clear Smog Haunter, an incredible asset for stopping self setup strategies such as Water Shuriken on Palisan or other similar ideas. Tony placed a respectable 25th at the OCIC, which is pretty damn good for Haunter, if I do say so myself. It may have been a short run, but Tony proved that Haunter has plenty of tricks and treats for the unique player infatuated with its charms. Haunter has already had an interesting 8th generation at the time of this video. It dropped to NU and right off the bat it posed a problem. This was a result of Pursuit being removed from the game, which was absolutely huge for it. Now it could simply switch out of Skunk Tank. This meant it could even run Choice Specs, as the extra power made it even easier to spam Shadow Ball, given the tier's dearth of good Ghost Resist and complete inability to punish it for switching out. The few Shadow Ball Resists were usually absolutely destroyed by Sludge Wave and vice versa. The exception was of course Skunk Tank but I wasn't able to withstand Specs hit over the course of a game and was used more as a nasty plot sweeper. Instead, players were put in a tough position where Pokemon Unpheasant and Scrafty could take Shadow Ball but not Sludge Wave, while Sandaconda and Togedemaru took Sludge Wave but not Shadow Ball. Haunter appreciated the power of Specs, but it didn't need to be prediction reliant. It could circumvent playing around its choice lock stabs with a substitute set that ensured it hit its target as hard as possible. As a bonus, its substitute set ran Disable, making it even harder to deal with. Many Pokemon only ran one move to actually hit Haunter with or were choiced. For example, Scarf Torgadamaru or many Scrafty sets with only knockoff were able to touch Haunter. So with the move disabled, Haunter could lock these Pokemon out of their move, proceeding to substitute again thanks to the recovery afforded by Black Sludge and safely ravaging the opponent's team further. It didn't need to substitute though. It could go for power while still switching moves with Life Orb, while also increasing its coverage with moves like Energy Ball that allowed it to instantly threat more Pokemon like Piloswine and Sandaconda. As always, it could irritate its switch ins with its support move pool, either with Will O Wisp Burn or tricking a choice item, because yeah, it could run a solid Scar set as well, cleaning up against faster, frailer Pokemon like Galarian Rapidash and Galarian Mr. Mime at the end of a game. Haunter was too difficult to deal with and it was banned from NU. However, it was retested sometime after and banned again because it was just that strong, ripping through the tier effortlessly. Now, Haunter sees very little use in RU as it struggles to keep up against the bulkier, stronger metagame. Its specs and scarf set can trick something and occasionally do some damage, but it's generally not worth using. The DLC that was released just before the time of this video will shake up the metagame, so it's not unlikely that as a result of power creep, Haunter will return to NU and might very well not be overpowered for the tier this time. However, it can rest easy because no matter how the rest of the generation goes, even if it drops to PU again, it is still a not fully evolved Pokemon that got banned from NU twice. And that's it! So how good was Haunter actually? Well, it was an important Pokemon in the first two generations of Yu Yu, then was prohibited from the third generations via an obscure clause. However, this may have been for the best, because that generation was where it started its run of NU excellence. It was absolutely terrific in Gens 3 to 5 and remained solid in Gen 6. It struggled in PU in Gen 7, but returned with a vengeance in Gen 8, abusing the lack of pursuit so thoroughly that it was banned from the tier twice. Amazingly, it even had a VGC appearance once Gengar lost levitate in gen 7. Overall, Haunter is an iconic piece of NU. Not bad for a Pokemon who isn't even fully evolved. Thanks for watching everyone, and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for this not fully evolved Pokemon. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Haunter? How would you make it stronger? Would you want to make it stronger? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.